bottom jaw, right back tooth. Bottom jaw, right back tooth. Or I guess that's a molar. The, the, the molar in the back of their bottom jaw on the right hand side only. Not your left. Don't. If it's your left, it's not. I can't pray for you yet. It has to be on the right side, bottom jaw, back molar. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. If that's you, I, I just want to pray for you. You wonder why I'm being so specific. You know. You know why. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I believe uh, if you came here tonight and you didn't plan to get baptized, but the word of the Lord just hit you hard and you want to dive in, just so you know, we got extra towels. I've seen, I've seen young men, I've seen young women fully clothed in jeans. I've seen them come up here and said, no, man, I need to start new and I need to start fresh. I refuse, I refuse for my life to continue the way it is. And I've seen them fully dressed, dressed nicer than me. They had their Sperry's on. <laughs> and I remember they got baptized and he literally had a pocket full of marijuana. And he says, nah, never again. I'm done. I'm done, Pastor Carlos. Thank you. <laughs> pocket full of marijuana. <laughs> Come on, man, I've seen it. And the only way it's possible is by obedience. Trust me, there's nothing special about me. Trust me. Being bald is just cool. <laughs> it's true. You should try it sometime. <laughs> My boy Jeremy knows how cool it is. Being bald is just cool, but it doesn't mean that you're anointed. <laughs> Obedience. Obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight's message, y'all know, I always, I always put a title on my message. Why? Because it helps you remember it. It always helps you remember it. Y'all remember the last time I preached? For those who were here, who remembers the message of the title that I spoke on? Find another way. Find another way. So tonight's message, let me think about it. Usually somebody calls me and it helps me with my message, but I didn't get a phone call today. Um, it's called, Don't Miss Your Appointment. Amen? Yeah, I know y'all felt that one. Don't miss your appointment. Ooh, I like that. Thank you so much, Caleb. Worship band, thank you guys, man. Thank y'all for, for just being obedient. Praise God. Praise God. So tonight's message is what? Don't miss your appointment. Don't miss your appointment. So uh, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a bring back a little details from the last message that I preached. And uh, that last message was called um, Find Another Way. And what the Lord put on my heart was uh, the story of Zacchaeus. Uh, for those who have gone to TBI, they probably know all about Zacchaeus. Um, do you all know who Zacchaeus is? Who is he? The little guy, right? 
He was a chief tax collector. And the Bible also said that he was rich. So you're talking about a, a, a short, rich guy. I don't think he was bald, but it would be cool if he was. Um, and what he did, he was too short to see Jesus, but he wanted to do what any, whatever it took to see Jesus. And so literally, Jesus went through Jericho to get to that specific spot. And when he got to that very specific spot, uh, Zacchaeus could not see Jesus because the, people, the, the Bible says that the people were too tall. And, um, and what the Lord was reminding me of is about those tall people that prevent you from seeing who Jesus is. And what, what the Lord put on my heart was you always have to find another way in order for you to see Jesus. Don't try to see Jesus because don't try to see Jesus through other people's eyes. Because once you start to see him through other people's eyes, you try to live your life through those other people instead of trying to find them for yourself. And so what Zacchaeus did, he ran into these tall people. And instead of him saying, you know what? Forget y'all. You followers of Jesus, I don't need y'all. I got money. I got a Maserati. I'm happy. So you know what? I'm gonna just go count my money and be happy. The thing is, he didn't say that. He says, you know what? Forget y'all. I'm gonna find another way. So he literally... Climbed up a tree. I, I, I'm just trying to picture how did he climb the tree. It's because if he did climb that tree, I want to see what it looked like. Because if I know if I was really short, I am not the tallest. I am not, I'm not vertically challenged, but I'm 5'7", and I've probably been this height for since 7th grade. But um, I, know that, I know that if I had to climb a tree and I was rich, I'd probably park my Maserati beside it, climb the hood of my Maserati, and then climb that tree. And uh, sure enough, what Jesus did, he literally looked up at the tree and said, Zacchaeus, come down for I'm staying at your house today. And the reason I'm backtracking, because you're going to start to see that it all adds up with what I'm going to speak about tonight. OK, so kind of just bear with me. OK, so 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 Jesus went to a very specific spot. The Bible says that when he got to the spot, he looked up at the tree and pointed at Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, I'm staying Oh, yeah, he said, come down immediately. He said, come down immediately because I'm staying at your house. And as soon as Zacchaeus ran, got down that tree, the first thing he said, he looked at Jesus and said, man, I'm giving half my stuff to the poor. And anybody that I've wronged, I'm paying them four times the amount back. Well, the thing is, Jesus didn't tell the man anything. He just said, come down. And the first thing he said was, man, I'm giving half my stuff to the Pope. And everybody that are wrong, I'm giving them four times the amount back. Like, man. And the thing is, what I've realized is that as soon as you hear your name called by God, by Jesus himself, the first thing you do is go into a repentful heart. Immediately you go into a repentful heart because he's called your name even though you felt that you weren't worthy of it. And the thing is, what, what, what happened? What was his biggest dream? Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, all he wanted was one thing. Ching, 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 ching. That's actually a, a little Chinese restaurant. It's called Ching, Ching. But he wanted that money. There's a lot of people that just want the money. But the thing is, once they get all that money, then they realize, man, it's starting to go away a lot faster than I'm trying to bring it in. That money's getting blown quick. And so Zacchaeus got to the point, he says, you know what? I'm giving half my stuff to the poor because I finally found a dream bigger than my money. Come on. He found something bigger than, 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 than the, the one thing that he always wanted was the money. But then he heard his name and found out that he wanted something greater than that money. Something greater than the Maserati. Something greater than looking through the, the eyes of other Christians. He said, I wanted my own. I don't care about how your walk is. I need my own. I need my own. And once you have your own, I promise you, there is a whole different ball game that happens. Amen? Amen. Don't miss your appointment tonight. Tonight is your appointed time. And Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you that their hearts are open. I thank you that they have a, a, a heart of, to receive revelation. And I thank you, Father, that, that you are going to do something amazing tonight. I thank you that your word says that we lay a hand on the sick and they shall recover. I thank you, Father, you said that we, we lay hands on the blind and they shall see. And I thank you that you said we, we lay hands on the dead and they shall resurrect. So, Father, I thank you.
that it will manifest tonight. I thank you, Father, for every, every person that's hungry for a move of God. They receive exactly what they wanted. And, Father, I thank you right now. If it ain't moving, I thank you, Father. We lay hands on that bad boy, and it comes to life. And I believe it. I settle it in my heart right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Yeah, if it ain't moving, I'm going to lay hands on it. We're going to resurrect that bad boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please go to John, the book of John, not first John, not second John, but the book of John. John, did you know that he was a, John was a, also known as the one whom Jesus loved? Did you also know that he was the only one that was not martyred for the name of Christ? He's the only one that died of old age. Yeah, the only one. <laughs> yeah, the only one. It's amazing. And he was the one that was, his nickname was the one whom Jesus loved. Man, isn't that amazing? Because now that's what he calls you, the one whom, whom I love. That's your name, the one whom I love. It blows my mind. All right, when you get there, get there. John chapter 9. And I'm going to just read, okay? And uh, y'all know, know how I do things. I'm going to read, teach you, read to you, teach to you. You're probably going to laugh. If you laugh, that's okay, because uh, a lot of people forgot that uh, ministry is fun. You're supposed to have fun in ministry. Remember, a lot, a lot of people have forgotten that. They've forgotten how fun ministry really is. Church is fun. Church is a lot more fun than going out there and partying, I promise you. I promise you. I, I, I've been out there, and probably a lot of you in this room have probably been there. You know what I mean? There's a lot of you in here that have a, have a history and y'all, y'all can honestly say, man, church is the, my one place where I can get away. Come on, Come on. And if I'm speaking to myself, so be it. I'll speak to myself too. <laughs> but I know I'm not. I know for sure I'm not. John chapter 9. It says, as he, y'all see that he is capitalized. Who do you think he is? Jesus. Pass along. He noticed a man blind from his birth. So that means he was blind the second he came out of his mama's womb. And he was blind. That means he didn't see his mama's face when he was born. So he has no clue what his mama or daddy looks like, okay? It says, his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be born blind? Jesus answered, it is not that this man nor his parents sinned, but he was born blind in order that the workings of God should be manifested in him. Wow. He must, we must work the works of him who sent me and be busy with his business while it is daylight. Night is coming on when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the world's light. When he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay, also mud. In the Amplified, it says clay slash mud. With his saliva, and he spread it as anointment on the man's eyes. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing when the neighbors and those who used to know him by sight as a beggar saw him, they said, it is not the man who used to, it, is it not the man who used to sit and beg? So tonight's message is don't miss your appointment. The reason I brought up Zacchaeus is because in order for Jesus to get to Zacchaeus, he th traveled through Jericho, which was a longer route in order to get to where Zacchaeus was. And the understanding is that Zacchaeus did not settle for standing behind the tall people. He says, no, I'm not going to stop there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to find another way so I can get to my appointment. The thing is, what happens when, what happens when uh, you have a, a doctor's appointment? Or you have an appointment to meet with somebody and you're late. 
I guarantee they'll replace you in the drop of a dime. They say, you know what? They're not here. They're 10 minutes late. Boom, they didn't call. We'll, we'll fill in the spot with somebody else. Next, let's get somebody else. Let's get somebody that is on time. Let's get somebody that, that came early. AKA, let's get somebody that's hungry. Let's get, hung, let's get somebody who, wants, who really wants it. Don't get me wrong, guys. I've been late to many things and I've missed out on them. There's some of y'all in this room that have, 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 have been late to things and, and sure enough, something happened. You're like, dang, only if I was on time. I know, uh, I know recently something happened. I think it was uh, um, yesterday, actually. Um, you don't mind if I share? Ms. Villapondo, yeah, you. Uh, well, yesterday uh, she left early. It, was, it blows my mind because this woman of God, she specifically says, uh, just so you know, every, uh, every last Saturday of the month, uh, this church uh, sows $500 to pay your bills. Every, every last Saturday of the month, they sow a seed of $500 to make sure to help pay your bills. And uh, pretty much all you got to do is show up on Saturday, get your ticket, fill it out. And every Saturday you come, you get a new ticket. And at the end, uh, at the end of the every, at the every, at the very last Saturday of the month, they draw, and if your name is picked, we pay your bills. Man, that's that's kingdom business to me, man, because you're called to be debt free. It is what it is. You're called to be debt free, and if the the church wants to help you, you better say yes and amen. And uh, well, yesterday, this woman of God spoke it out of her mouth. She says, "I'm gonna win." She said it. But uh, she left early. And whose name was drawn? Hers. She left early. And in my heart, I know the Lord's going to bring it back to her. I know it is because she proclaimed that thing. She spoke and she wasn't moved by it. But she left early. And that appointment was waiting for her right here. When that name was drawn, everybody, we, everybody knows where you sit. You sit right there, and, and everybody's head goes, Pfft. where's her daughter? Where's Bree? I know if she's here, Villapondo's here. That's her last name. That's how I remember most people's last names, Villapondo. And I was like, man, where is she at? That appointment. She was there for a scheduled appointment. Every one of you here is scheduled on a very strict appointment. That, that's why I'm trying to tell you, for those who, who, uh, who, who need healing in certain areas, the reason I was mentioning very specific things, because there was a divine appointment for your healing at that second. You know what I mean? And I apologize for those who are online. If we're, if we're online right now, if, if that's you um, with your foot or your molar, I want to pray for that right now because uh, that's uh, that'd be disobedient for me not to. So, Father, I just thank you right now for those who are watching online. If they have, in, if they hurt their foot, the left foot, second toe beside the pinky, I thank you, Father, right now for a complete restoration. I thank you, Father, that you make that pain go. I thank you, Father, they are hungry, and I thank you because of their hunger that you manifest your glory on them right now in a complete healing. No bruising. They won't lose that nail. And I thank you, Father, that you completely restore it in Jesus' name. And um, the molar, uh, for the, the right bottom jaw molar, Father, I thank you right now for that pain. I thank you, Father, that that pain has to go. It is, uh, I, I thank you, Father, that you can do a supernatural root canal as they sleep. I thank you that you can do it. You have manifested yourself, and it is just a tooth. I thank you, Father, you make the blind eye see. You can make a, a tooth completely whole. And I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. I completely forgot we were online too. So I know there's people in California probably watching. So, <laughs> so just in case, I wanted to make sure to get that out to you. And so, uh, and John, and, and so Zacchaeus was at that appointed time. And, and so now we're in John. Uh, John chapter 9, he's, they specifically pass by this man. They see the man on the side of the road. The first thing that the disciples say, they said, man, Jesus, who sinned? 
Who sinned? Was it this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus says, man, what, what, what do you mean by that? What, what do you mean who, who sinned? AKA, who do we need to blame for him being the way he is? Is that, what, is that too much? Who do we need to blame? See, the thing is, there's many people that follow Jesus Christ, but they stick to the past hurt so much that they literally say, man, well, well, who do we have to blame? Who do we have to blame in order for them to receive their healing? Or, or who do we have to blame that they're the reason they are the way they are? Who do we have to blame? See, the thing is, is that when it comes to our walk with Christ, when it comes to this specific walk, it's, it's not the blame game. Come on. If, I, I know I'm not preaching to myself tonight. I know, I know I'm not preaching to myself. Y'all, y'all are some hungry people. Y'all came on a Sunday night. Y'all know y'all work tomorrow at 6 a.m. And I'm okay with that. Y'all, and y'all are here. See, the thing is, is that, that you know that you're called. Every single one of y'all, y'all know that y'all are called. But you feel like there's a delay going on on your calling and on your purpose. Let, let, me, let me give you a little insight on this. In Genesis chapter 1, I believe it's like in verse 28, around there. It's in the 20s. Um, Jesus, not Jesus, uh, God, the, the Bible says that he specifically spoke everything into existence, right? He spoke everything into existence. But there's one thing that, I don't know if y'all, y'all got this. In fact, I'm going to have to go there because I want to be very, very specific. It's verse, I'm, I'm going to start reading in verse 26. It says, uh, chap, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us... Make mankind in our image after our likeness and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea and the birds in the air and the beast and over all the earth and everything that creeps upon the earth. Look at verse 27. So God created man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why doesn't it say he spoke it? See, the thing is, a lot of people don't get the fullness of understanding. God can speak everything. He just has, if he says, Carlos, your blue jeans are black jeans, they'll turn black. If he, said, if, if he said, man, you know what? I want the blue sky to be orange. It'll turn orange. And then he says, let us make man in our image. And then it says, so he created man. So that specifically means that he took the time and used his hands instead of just his words, to create us in his image. See, when you create something, you have to be physically involved. When you create anything, you have to be physically involved with it. And so in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, so God created man in his own image. So he literally took the time and says, no, I have to have my hand involved in this one. I have to have my hand involved in this because this isn't just another animal. This isn't just another, another, another water, another breathing creature. No, this is my creation. And then after that, what did he do to make him come alive? Come on. Why didn't he do that with every other animal? Why didn't he do it with everything else? Because every single one of y'all in this room is called, appointed, anointed. Every single one of y'all have a purpose. Every single one of y'all. And you're wondering, what's taking so long for me to get there? Well, let me ask you, who are you trying to blame? Let me ask you, who are you trying to blame that's slowing down your process to getting closer to Jesus? What's slowing you down? Because there's, there's nobody that you can blame from the past. Nothing. You can't blame nobody. It's over. It's done. It already happened. It, it's already done. It's over. It's severed. 
Come on. He says, I created this. I created you. Andy, I put my hand in your belly and freaking made you. That liver, I made that liver. Matt, that rib, I made that rib. Amaya, your thick hair, I chose for you to have thick hair. Not like your dad, though. (laughs) Kind of bald. And that's okay. I've met many men of God that are bald. That preach the gospel heavier than I've ever met, so I'm okay with that. Come on. He created it. That means because his hand is involved in us, that means that we have a specific purpose and a guaranteed destiny. If, if we choose to find that way. If you choose to make your appointment. Because he's going to pass you. For those who are not believers in this room, that's perfectly okay. Because tonight is your appointment. Tonight is an appointment. You showed up when, whenever you weren't so, you know you had many things else to do. You know you, you, you had other choices, other places you were invited to. But you said, nah, you know what? I'll come to this appointment. Come on. Come on. Jesus, we need to have somebody to blame. Jesus, we need, we need somebody to blame. Was it this man's sin? How the man's sin? He barely came out the womb. How's he a sinner? He didn't come out the womb cussing like Peter. He didn't come out the womb getting drunk. He was an innocent baby, but born blind. Okay, so who do we have to blame? Let's blame his mommy and his daddy. Oh, we're going to blame them. See, the thing is, when it comes to our personal walk, we say, man, but, 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 but he did this to me. But, but, but she did this. But, but, but my mom, my mom did this. And my mom said this about me. That's why I'm struggling. My, my, but my dad, my dad did this to me. My dad, and it's his fault. And we, we, we make the decision to play the blame game. But the thing is, that hurt, it's, it's our job to completely let that go from us. The past blame game, the past blame game has to go if you want the favor and the appointment of God on your life. It has to go. Praise God. Praise God. Go to John chapter 1, verse 5. I want, I want to read this, how, how Jesus responded to these, these men. It was like a, it was like a rebuke, but, but it wasn't. But it was, if you know what I mean. Chapter 1, verse 5. John chapter 1, verse 5. Was it John? What did I read from? No, it's John chapter 9, verse 5. That's where we're at. John chapter 9. John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the world's light. And when he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay. The thing is, is the first thing that the disciples thought in their minds. They said, who can we blame? Who can we blame? Who can we blame? And Jesus says, man, you're saying who to blame, but yet the king of kings, the healer, the baptizer is literally standing right in front of him. So instead of trying to find someone to blame, why don't you just go to the source and have them completely made whole? completely made whole and the source was standing right in front of him literally the source was standing right in front of him and the disciples were still trying to find someone to blame see the thing is there's people that follow jesus and still carry the the title of christianity on them but 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 put jesus aside when it comes to past hurts Nah, jesus knows what i went through 
Yeah, he knows what I went through. And because, but because he knows what I went through, he knows why I am the way I am. You know, I've seen I've see billboards all the time. I see billboards all the time. It says, come as you are. Come as you are. Uh, this is so-and-so community church. I'm like, man, that's awesome. Come as you are. Then in, in my heart, I can hear a voice say, yeah, but you better not stay the same. When you encounter Jesus, you don't stay the same. When you encounter Jesus, nothing stays the same. Nothing. Everything changes when you encounter the king. Everything. So this man was born blind. This man was born blind, but yet he still had an appointment with God. He still had an appointment with the most high God. And then Jesus goes and says, we're not going to blame anybody. I'm right here and I'm about to reveal God's glory in this man. I'm about to reveal God's glory in this man because God knows this man by name and we're not gonna blame the past. See guys, a lot of people you wonder, you're like, man, Pastor Carlos, man, he's so funny, he's so cool, he's this, he's that. But, but yet, there's a lot of you that don't know how, how poor we actually grew up. My sister's right there, she can vouch for me. We grew up poor. It was, it was, it was we were so poor, people would break into our house leaving money. <laughs> like man he, these people are broke <laughs> come on my sister knows this my sister knows this and you, you vouch for this when I was a little kid I, we could not afford toys so I would literally open the Toys R Us catalog cut the toys out and I'd, and I'd play with the little toy paper yeah and, and, and like to me I think it's funny <laughs> because man we were, we were poor we were poor am I lying it's true, huh? I would literally cut, I would open the Toys R Us catalog, cut the toys, and please don't be trying to buy me no toys. I know some of y'all, y'all like, oh, man, bless that boy's heart. I'm going to buy him some Power Rangers. Don't, don't buy me no toys, please. I'm just ministering to you about what I came out of and how I did not blame my past to where I'm at today. That's what I'm trying to get to. You know what I'm saying? But, but it's a true story. It's a true story. Ask my sister. I used to cut out the Power Rangers from the catalog and play with the paper. And I would save them for the next day. And when the next week, when the, ne when the next catalog came out, I'm like, ooh, they got a new, a new figure out. And I got it. I got the new toy. And so when I'd go to school, they're like, dude, did you see the new PlayStation? For the longest, I thought a PlayStation was actually an outside playground. I thought that for probably about two years. I really did. I didn't, I really thought it was an outside playground. I was like, yeah, dude, we got a PlayStation. <laughs> I climbed it yesterday. <laughs> I went down the slide three times. I'm serious. That was me. You know, I, 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 could, I could blame an alcoholic father. I could blame a, a mother that abandoned us. I could blame her. I could blame her for going to prison. And not, not, sh not showing up. I could blame her that I would stay on the side of the sidewalk. Ask my sister. I'd stay on the sidewalk till the sun went down saying, she's coming to pick us up. Don't worry. She's coming. She's coming, guys. Don't worry. And I remember my sister. She's the oldest of the family. She would say, hey, dad said come inside. She's not coming. And I would sit there on the curb. Am I lying? I would sit there with my backpack on. Hours on a curb waiting for my mom to show up. Just waiting. Just waiting. And see, the thing is, I could blame that. I could blame that. But it's not going to stop me. Because there's an appointment that I had to meet when I stood before him and Jesus called my name. He says, Carlos, you're going to shake the nations. Start here. And I said, man, I'm down. Come on, man. There is no blame game when it comes to your walk with Christ. There's nobody that you can blame. Yeah, man, the devil, the devil, man, he wants you to function in your dysfunction. That's what he wants you to do. That's where he wants you to work. He wants you to work in your dysfunction. And yet Jesus is saying, man, I'm here to break them chains off of you. Just live free. Come on. Come on, man. 
wow. And what I realized, what I realized that, that in all these years that I could have blamed, I could have blamed my mom, I could have blamed my dad, I could have blamed them. I easily could have. The Lord reminded me today, he said, if you would have blamed them, you'd also have to carry that blame. You'd have to carry everything that they did to you and you'd have to make it a reality in your heart. If you were to blame them, you'd have to carry their blame on you. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? If, if I blamed them for everything that I had to go through, because my dad was an alcoholic, at what age do you think I was an alcoholic? 17. I would wake up uh, before I went to high school. I'd wake up, and I, my, my buddy Eddie, Andy, Justin, and we all be drinking at 7 a.m. Why didn't they ever buy me a sandwich? I'm just saying. A true, a true friend will feed you. And see, I could have blamed them, but if I would have blamed them, I'd have to live in that blame that I blame them. You, you know what I'm saying. Come on, you know what I'm saying. If I would have blamed them, I'd have to carry that on me. And it's called bondage. It's called bondage. That's what it is. And before you're going, you're trying to like, why am I breathing so hard? Why is it so hard to move? And, and, and it's not, I'm telling you, it is not because God's trying to teach you a lesson. He's not. He's not teaching you a lesson like that. It's bondage that you decided to carry somebody else's blame because of your past on you. And he says, I cut that thing off of you. He said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that all things are new and I have made you a new creation. Come on. Come on. Come on. Through the struggle, through the pain, man, through everything that I've been through, I realized that I had an appointed time. I had an appointment that I had to meet. I had an appointment. And, and so think about this. This blind man sitting on the side of the road, he had an appointment with Jesus Christ at that exact moment, at the exact place. So, so just picture that. This blind man sitting there, he had an appointment with Jesus Christ, and yet the first thing that the people that follow Jesus says, man, who do we blame that he's like that? And Jesus says, no, we're not going to blame anybody. That man right there is going to manifest God's glory, and he's going to do it right now. So he goes to the man, spits on the ground, makes mud and then puts it on the man's eyeballs and then after that he says now go this is really cool this is really cool so this man is blind he can't see jack squat nothing and then he puts mud in his eyes covers them and then he says now go if if that man was able to see with the mud slapped on his eyes, now he can't see, period. And the thing is, many of us feel that we can blame somebody else for what we go through, but the thing is, what I realized in my appointed time is that I had to walk, even though I could see, I had to walk through a dark path and say, Jesus, I trust you. Even though I can't see, you're telling me to go somewhere. I can't see where you're telling me to go, but I trust that you're guiding me. I trust that you spoke to me. I trust that you called me by name. I trust that you said you can do all things. I trust that you said that to me. And he put mud on his eyes to guarantee that he would not see at all. He wouldn't be able to see nothing. And he guaranteed it. He says, no, I need you to know that There you go. Yes, I'm Hispanic, so that's why I use a lot of sound effects. Hispanics use sound effects for everything. They do. They really do. So that's what he did. He goes, <laughs> now go. And he says, now go. See, the thing is, he ensured that that man wasn't able to see anything. So nobody could say, man, he was able to see. Jesus ensured that the man was blind. And then he says, now it's your time to go. See, many of us, as soon as we get saved, we're not sure how we're going to do this. Well, let me tell you, go, go, go. What's going to stop you from, from, from not going is you. The only person that can stop you is you. The only person that cannot have you hungry for your word is you. 
Why are you not waking up? Why are you not reading? Why are you not praying? Praying? It's because you're going like, well, I got to blame this. I got to blame the church. Blame the church? You are the church. So who are you going to blame now? Well, I, you know, you know, the, these churches want my money. God don't care about your money. It's a heart issue. You know, I blame the church. You are the church. That's what the Bible says. You get offended. <laughs> Come on. Come on. This is just revelation. That's all it is. The mud made it worse. <laughs> the mud makes it worse. But Pastor Carlos, I'm saved now. Yeah, you're saved now. You gave your heart to Jesus. Yeah, but man, I went into my prayer closet, man. And it got worse. You know what? Because when you go into that prayer closet, when you start to open up that word, consider that the mud. Consider it the mud. Consider it the mud. Man, but I prayed and it got worse. Good. Because the mud makes everything worse. But it guarantees you to go. It guarantees you to move forward when you feel that you can't. Because whenever you start getting into the mud process, then it gets fun. See, the thing is, the thing is, while he was blind, it's no different from us being broken. While he was blind, it's no different from us being hurt. When he was blind, it's no different from us being confused. When he was blind, it's no different from us being rejected by the world. Come on. I know what it's like to be rejected. I know what it's like to be bullied. I know what it's like. Man, come on, dude. I was, I was a short, freckled-faced, fat kid that didn't know English. I didn't know any English at all. And it's true. My sister's laughing because she knows what I used to look like. I was, I, was, I was short. I was really short in my hair. It was like an Afro puff. It's weird. I, I, I asked myself, where is it at now? Yeah, it's true. And I know what it's like to, for, for the bullying process. I know the hurt. I know what it's like, but I, I refuse to blame anything on that past. Come on. See, the thing is, when you have that mud on your eyes and you're walking blindly, when you have the mud on your eyes and you're walking blindly, the miracle is in the journey. The miracle is in the journey. He put the mud on his eyes and he said, go, go, yeah, go to the pool and wash. Amen. Go to the pool and wash. So that man, blind in every aspect, he was blind physically and also blind because he had a blotch of mud in his eye. <laughs> Guarantee that he was blind. Oh, I'm going to make sure you don't see nothing. You're going to enjoy this journey. Yeah, it might be tough. Yeah, it might be difficult, but you're going to enjoy the journey because you're going to get your miracle. Amen. Come on. And there's people in this house. I know you are waiting for that miracle. And see, the thing is, a lot of people don't understand that the, the word. They're like, man, but, but the word says, yeah, I get it. The word says that he is a lamp unto my feet. The Bible also says that the just shall walk by faith and not by come on so it's okay to be blind it's okay to be blind because that miracle that you've been waiting for is in the journey on your way over there the thing is you can't you can't settle you can't settle just for one area you can't settle for the mud you can't settle if you're joseph and you receive the coat come on I've been prophesied by every prophet out there they said man you have a, a, a joseph anointing Wear your coat of many colors. And you know what I've realized? That coat of many colors have made me a target. It has made me a target for Satan to come at me. And he has, he has, he has attacked, he's made the, the most simplest things that I've ever tried to do. He's made it a difficult task. Why? Because now I'm a target. Now I'm a threat. And so you're asking to be anointed. You're asking to be appointed. You're asking to be called. You're asking for a coat of Joseph, but you don't want to be targeted. 
It ain't going to happen. When it comes to this journey, walk with Christ. You will be targeted, but I promise it comes with a guarantee of victory. The Bible says from glory to glory to glory to glory. And the thing is, you, you're like, man, well, what does a victory look like? Well, sometimes victory looks like your mom going to prison. Victory looks like your dad being an alcoholic. Some of y'all might not agree with me, but if it wasn't for me to go through that, it wouldn't make me hungry for God where I am now. Come on. Come on, man. For those, for those have, has, have, 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 have struggled who for those have man if, if I know that there's a few of y'all in this room that have been to prison I know there's a few of y'all oh, yeah. Come yeah come on yeah. you, you ain't ashamed of it because if you didn't go to prison it wouldn't put you where you're at today Amen, come, on. come on come on man there's a few of y'all that have been to prison and says man I refuse to be locked up in this place and stay here Amen. I'm gonna shake the nation some way somehow and if it starts because of this struggle in my past, so be it. It's a part of a testimony that nobody can take from me. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk this bad boy out, guys. Check it out. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave y'all with this. I'm going to leave you with this. Go to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. Hey, Caleb. Can you come up here, bro? And uh, I don't know where your guitar is at. I don't know where you put it. Okay. Second Kings, chapter 2. I want you to go to verse 14. If you have it, if you have it, Bajal, can you just put it up there for me? Check this out. Go ahead and start playing, bro. Play your heart out. I'm telling you, the Lord's going to use this man of God right here and put him on many stages, on many stages. Amen. No, he's not a member of this church, but I don't care. He's an anointed man of God that I know God's going to use him, and I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of seeing this man succeed. I'm telling you, man, it's just hunger that has this man playing. Just hunger. That's it. Now read this. Check this out. This blows my mind. It says, then he took the mantle of Elijah that he had fallen from him and struck the water. Okay. Let me tell you a quick story. All right. So it's Elisha and Elijah. Elisha pursued Elijah. And he says, man, I want that mantle. And I'm not going to leave until I get it. So Elijah said, okay, watch me go. And when you watch me, my mantle is going to fall on you. The double portion anointing. You can lay hands on the sick. They're going to recover. Double portion. Woo. And so check this out. So, so he followed Elijah. You know, it, it, pretty much it was, it was like him and Jesus, right? You know, he was just pursuing the Jesus. And so... Then he took the mantle of Elijah because he just got called up and the mantle fell. So Elisha grabbed that mantle. He said, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. I've been waiting for this. And then he struck the water and then he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He was not happy with the mantle. He wasn't happy with the double portion. He wasn't happy with the miracles. He says, I need to see the face of the God. I need to see the face of the God that he served. I'm not here just for, for, for miracle powers. I'm not here for that. I want to have a relationship with the man that he knew. Where is the God of Elijah? Where is he? I need to see him. I, I got the man, oh cool, I got the coat. That's, that's awesome, but I need to see the face of the man. I need to see the face of the God that he served. I need him. Amen. That's who I need. Amen. That's who I need. That's who I'm desperate for. I'm not desperate for a call. I'm not desperate for, for, for a, a, a title. I'm not desperate for the miracles. I'm not desperate for that. I'm desperate to see the man who he served. I need to see the God of Elijah. I need more. I need more than just an anointing. I need more than that. I need to see him face to face. 
And the Bible says you can have it. The Bible says for those who are pure at heart, we'll see God face to face. Guys, my biggest dream is to have my lips against God's lips and to see him and for him just to talk to me this close. I'm like, God, I know one day I'm going to get it. But there's impurities that I need to, I need that to be exposed so I can, I can have a visitation like that. So I see myself, and I'm just being honest with you. I just want to be as, as transparent as possible. I'm right now saying, where is the God of Elijah? I need to see him for myself. I don't want to see him through anybody else's relationship. I need him because I'm desperate myself. And if you're desperate yourself, and if you want that move, if you need that miracle, and you need it for yourself, not because somebody told you to, get up here. Get up here and get it for yourself. Come on. Go ahead, get in, man of God. Get it for yourself, man. Be Elijah. Say, where is the God of Elijah? And what makes this so powerful, it's not this man's gifts. It's not. It's just he knows his calling. He knows his purpose. And he knows wherever he has to start, he'll do that. I can feel the hunger up here. I can feel the hunger. I can feel the hunger. And I'm telling you, God's going to meet you because of your hunger. He'll meet you. Come on, just worship. Just worship. Come on. While he's worshiping, if you want that fresh start and you just want to be baptized, man, meet me at the pool. Meet me at the pool. I'll meet you at the pool if you're desperate and I'll baptize you. If you want, if you're, if you want to watch the mud, Come on, so you can actually see. Come on, I'll meet you at the pool. I'll meet you at that pool.
you want to meet me at the pool, I'll be waiting for you. That's an invitation for everybody. If you want to meet me at the pool, I'll be here. Get a fresh start. Get a fresh start. You don't, you don't have to deal with it. You don't have to bl- put the blame game on anybody. Come on. I'll meet you at the pool. there's a heart I I can hear two hearts literally crying out saying man I did not bring a change of clothes I can hear it I can hear it so loudly let me tell you you ain't gonna take that you ain't gonna take that clothes to heaven with you anyways it's it's okay you know that your heart's crying out I'm telling you do not be afraid this is because you want it. This is because you weren't forced to do it. This is because you don't care what's on the clothes that's on your back. You're encountering a Jesus that's greater than that. We got towels. We got towels. We got towels and we got fans. You can air dry. I know your heart's crying out for a baptiz- a baptismal. And I'm telling you, I'm offering it to you. I can hear two hearts that weren't prepared, but they're going to get it tonight. Great. 
cradle in love. for you come on none of this none of this is planned guys this is called showing up to your appointment this is called showing up to your appointment and getting that mud washed off come on come on Woo. come on come on I I even asked the little man you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yep okay you want to be baptized yes and the father son and the holy ghost you know what that is yeah you got it <laughs> come on come on I'm, I'm i'm always cautious because when it's children i want it to know that it's for they they need to know it this isn't this isn't for a show this isn't man he knows it and he wants it so we're going to give it to him come on Let's go. One more. It don't matter. The, it don't, trust me. It's a hunger that don't even think about twice about the clothes.
the Holy Spirit nothing is considered valuable anymore nothing nothing is valuable except his word his word is so valuable we we literally the word says that we engrave it onto the tablet of our hearts come on everything changes tonight everything changes everything changes Everything changes tonight. Come on, man. Everything changes tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, if there's anybody else, man, <laughs> come and dive into the pool. Come and dive into the pool. <laughs> the water's perfect. The water's warm. <laughs> it's waiting. It's waiting. It's waiting. Yes, the journey might be difficult to get there. The journey might be tough because you can't see. The journey might be dark because you don't know where you're going. But when you get there, <laughs> when you get there, it's all worth it. There's no... There's no valuable, there's no nothing valuable on the clothes. There's nothing valuable. Come on. Come on. Come on. Father, right now, if there's anyone else, we thank you for their hearts being captivated to dive into the pool. Man. There's still a pool. There's still a pool. There's still a very heavy pool. If he wants it, come on. If he wants it. If he wants it. If he wants it. Only if he wants it. Only if he wants it. Only if he wants it. It has to be something that burns in you. It has to burn in you almost where you, you can't do anything but to cry out and do it. Man, I can still feel a pool. I can feel a heavy pool. Man, I can feel a heavy pull, heavy. Like I said, I'm not crazy, guys. I'm just obedient. <laughs> I'm just obedient to what I hear him say. And there's a heavy pull still. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to find your value in this pool. You're going to find your value. You're going to find your identity. You're going to breathe for the first time. I, I, I even hear that the person that wants to dive in has trouble breathing. Has trouble breathing. I'm just, yeah, it's out there. Yeah, it is. It is out there. But I'm just, Jensen Franklin said it like this. Jensen Franklin said, if you were at your house and you ordered a pizza and the pizza delivery guy brought the pizza without the box and he just had the pizza dripping down his arm, the cheese, the pepperoni dripping down his arm, the first thing you would say is, dude, where's the box? But the thing is, that box literally costs six cents to Pizza Hut. It's six cents. Six pennies is the value of that box. 
And Jensen Franklin said, you're a six cent box with a value that's inside of you. Give people the value because out here is worth nothing. This is worthless because trust me, my grave is just as deep as yours and I'm not taking none of it in a U-Haul to the grave. <laughs> I'm not taking it with me. I'm not. He said the value's inside the box and every single one of us here is just a six penny box with a value inside of us that are people that are, people are hungry to get that, that value inside of you. So Father, we thank you right now. The reason I'm waiting is because I know that grace, grace is a God that waits. And I don't want to just shut down this service and not leave this opportunity to jump into this pool. I don't want to leave this opportunity just like that. Grace, grace, grace. Uh, grace. Grace is a God that's willing to wait for you. Grace. Yeah. 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 You still have miracles to see from these hands. You still have miracles. Lay hands on the blind eyes. Do it. Lay hand on the sick. Do it. Lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. These hands. These hands that have experienced a lot. These hands that have been through some things. Lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. They will recover. They will recover. They will recover. Yeah. You're not afraid to fail. The only failure is actually not trying at all. And you're not afraid to fail. These hands will see them. They will see them. They will see them. They will see them. They will see them. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 Salvation in your family, bro, it's happening. Keep praying for them. Fast on their behalf. Fast. There's no prayer in fasting. There's no power in fasting. A lot of people think that there's power in fasting. There's not. The whole power is you crucifying your flesh. And once you crucify your flesh, then you start to step into a supernatural realm. So I'm telling you fast so you can step into that supernatural realm and see how heaven opens on behalf of those that need salvation in your family. Listen to me. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Grace. Grace. I keep hearing grace. I just have to wait. I'm going to just wait a few more minutes. I just need to wait a few more minutes. If you could, for those prayer warriors, please pray. Please pray that that, that, that individual will come. If that's you and you're in California, if you're in California, man, just get a freaking cup of water and say in Jesus' name and dump that thing on you. If that's you in California, I'm telling you, in Jesus' name. I keep forgetting people are watching online. So yeah, 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 yeah. Pastor Bajal, do you have anything? Pastor Matt, do you have anything? Moses, do you have anything? Come on. I'll pull on you too, Caleb. You have anything on your heart, man? No? Come on, man. All right. So, Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for what you did tonight. We thank you that we are okay with being a box that costs six pennies. And we thank you, Father, that the value is inside of us. We thank you. We thank you, Father, that you 
you are, are revealing yourself in this place. And I thank you, Father, that we showed up to this building, but leaving this building a church. So, Father, I thank you that every single body in this place has encountered their appointment. They are on time for their appointment. And most of all, Father, they enjoy being a believer in you. So, Father, I thank you for filling them with joy, 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 joy on a whole different level. And we bless them. We thank you, Father, that favor isn't fair. Favor is not fair. And they have it. They have your favor because they have been created by you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 Before you go, give somebody a hug. Let them know that, that they are loved. Let them know that they are blessed. Let them know that they are called. And don't forget Wednesday. Be here Wednesday. If you, if you enjoy services like this, I dare you come Wednesday. Because I might not be speaking but it will be my wife. It will be my wife. And I'm telling you, if you think I have something in me, my wife has something great in her. So come this Wednesday and we'll see you here. Bless you guys. Hug somebody on the way out and be blessed on your way home. Amen. We love you guys. This is Faith for Life Church.